nothing quite puts things into perspective like a day like today. It's always that last MRI before Christmas, for whatever reason, that we get terrible news. But it would be amazing to be able to catch our breaths, to just not be always looking over your shoulder about what's coming next for your son, and just, just to have Christmas and have his birthday and celebrate a new year knowing that he's well. Joel has needs we never expected to have to meet as parents. No one thinks they will have a child that needs that much attention. And then we have Elijah, who's younger, but who is caught up and has the exact needs Joel has. And then we have the two older sons, and I'm absolutely overwhelmed right now. I am in over my head, and I totally know it. And yet, in those moments where it's so overwhelming and where you have to have so much patience, I usually just remember I could have three kids now instead of four, and I don't want that. I love that Joel's here, and it's so hard, and there's so much he needs, and I've never been more overwhelmed in my life, and it's so worth it, and it's so wonderful, and it's not going to be like this forever. The kids grow up, and they grow up quickly, and they need us less, and it's just not the worst thing in the world to be needed. There's days it feels like it. <laughs> thing Joel has never lost in this entire experience is his infant giggle. You know, and when a one-year-old laughs, it's the most, uh, I don't know, I don't think there's anything in this world that, that brings joy to your heart faster. <laughs> He's almost four and he doesn't talk yet in a meaningful way. But when he laughs like that, you just know like, you know, he's good. Like he's enjoying life. You know he has a quality of life. And that's that's huge. <laughs> yep, yeah, just one. When Joel was one, he was diagnosed with a very rare and very aggressive brain tumor. And we found out that the way they treat this kind of tumor is they just throw the most aggressive chemo and radiation they have at it. They just, they give it everything they have. We did a month of radiation and it was six days a week for 30, 30 days. He was so sick he would vomit three or four times a day. You just always had to have a change of clothes for him and for yourself. And he was losing so much weight that he wasn't doing very well. And finally I just really felt strongly in my spirit that we were supposed to pray that he stopped being nauseous. And we did that and he stopped being nauseous. He never threw up on chemo again. So that was a really tough period. And, mm -hmm. and coming out, you know, 10 months, he started to do better and he was starting to thrive and he was starting to be more like Joel. They do MRIs every two months throughout his chemo, throughout his radiation. Um, they'd always been clear. At 10 months, he gets an MRI and they tell us the tumor's back. And they said, I'm so sorry. This is we, devastating. He said, this is a tragedy. Yeah. He said, we've already given him all the chemo we can give him. There's nothing new we can try. We've tried the most aggressive things and it's failed. They told us that he had anywhere from two weeks to about four months to live. They had us sign a do not resuscitate right there in the office and they called hospice for us because they knew it was spreading already and it was spreading quickly. But his very next MRI, which was three months later, two of his, two of his tumors were gone and the other one was shrinking. And that's the last we've seen any tumors. That was a year ago in October. Um, we've been off of all chemo, all radiation, all kind of cancer treatment for six months now, and everything's been clear. It's always weird because every three months we have this day where we're driving to the hospital and life as we know it, like entirely, can totally change in the next six hours. Like, we know that today we go there and the doctors can tell us today that he's dying. You know, or they could tell us today that everything looks good. We get.
get reminded on a fairly regular basis about what's really, really, really important. Because every time we risk facing Joel, it, it shifts your priorities and you think, oh, family's important, love is important, these relationships are important. And so it changes how we act with each other. Like, I don't love Joel less because he's sick. I love him more. <laughs> and I want to do whatever I can to just love him. two different points we were told that Joel's death was imminent, and yet he's here. He's here 22 months later, um, 24 months later, and it's amazing. Oh, well, here they come. Um, so our team is Holy coming crap. up, and they have, our, they have our report from today's MRI. And it's a big team. Hi, guys. Our pager just went off, so I think Joel's finally ready for us, but we'll do this first, and then we'll go get Joel. Okay. Um, well, we do have the results from his MRI. Um, brain looks fine. Everything brain looks stable. Um, spine, which is probably why you've noticed the walking, not so good. Okay. Um, and this is actually, um, I didn't bring the comparison to show you, but sure. it's pretty clear. This um, whole thing is tumor? That's all tumor. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, my precious. I think, you know, at this point, Joel's sort of outside of normal uh -huh. for this tumor and pretty much for any. Uh -huh. So I think trying to go out there on a limb and, and say what anything the next two months are going to be. I just, I, I, you know, I just don't know what we know. Okay. I know this is a big deal. It is. Um, but there's been lots of big deals. I know. It's and a big deal. I, you know, and it's, and it's always, every time it's hard. And, like, it's hard no matter what each time. And yeah, like... There's still hope each time. Like God's been so good to us each time. Like unspeakably good. Like we talked about, we sat here two years ago when we weren't sure he'd make it to his birthday. And I thought, can you believe we're here? Like, can you believe we're here? And even this. So I think there's a lot of things that you guys are gonna have to sort of talk about and think about, you know, in the, in the next week. Yeah, it's one of those weeks again. Yeah. We'll do uh, that. Is he, like, we'll will they call us when he's awake? We can go down. Can kind of Let's go down. get our baby. You want to go get our baby? No, we're done with the oncologist and we're coming down now. God, I just thank you for Joel. And I thank you for his life. And I thank you that you have been the sustainer of his life. And God, we just place him in your hands right now. And we say, you, you be his God. You rescue. Jesus' name. Amen. You have to pray in the elevator because you can't just pray in the hallways. You'd be crazy. That's true. <laughs> hey, my doll. You're very sleepy. You're still so sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> Our journey with Joel has been characterized by a lot of minor miracles, and I think it, it illustrates the journey that we're on. You know, we're on this journey of of living day to day, and um, and worrying about day to day, and um, and taking things as they come. Like, this news doesn't change the vision that we have for Joel. Like, 
Upstairs is really hard. It changes my life tomorrow, and it changes my life right now, but it doesn't change what God's destiny is for Joel. Like... <laughs> We've learned pretty quickly that, like, there's grace for today. Like, we know we can handle today. But as soon as we start going a week ahead, a month ahead, what's it going to be like for his birthday? What, I mean, there just doesn't seem to be grace for next month. There's grace for today. So we had an MRI today, and they told us that Joel has a new tumor. I know that that's kind of hard, huh? I pray for him to be healed. Does that sound like a good plan? Well, do you want to pray with, for him with us? Okay, let's do that. You yeah, God. Please help. And then tumors go away. Before we really came to terms with like, Joel could die, Joel could go to heaven, you pray out of this fear. You know, like, God, please heal him because, because I'm so scared. And then it shifts and you're not praying anymore because you're scared. Because if you, if you, can, if you can finally get away from that fear of death and you can finally break free from that, then you're just praying for God's glory. He has value because he's Joel. He has value because of the love of like of me being able to hold him, you know, and of that connection that we can have that only we can have. And so I think that even if Joel doesn't change the world, he's changed my world, you know, and um, he's changed me. And we can have a beautiful life. Go play?